Hello, I'm John Eldridge, and welcome to the Ransomed Heart Podcast. This week, we want to bring you a taste of a brand new resource being offered by Ransomed Heart entitled, A Battle to Fight. One of the great frustrations that men in particular experience is the chasm between the life that we want and the life that seems to be promised to us in the scriptures, life abundant, and the life we have. It feels frustrating. Life feels like hassles. It feels like trials. It just feels like one thing after another, and we can't quite reconcile why it seems so hard. Hello, I'm John Eldridge. Welcome to a very, very important series on spiritual warfare for men. This is such a crucial key for men to both understand why life is the way it is, where the harassments and hassles and trials most often, frankly, are coming from, and more importantly, how to deal with them, how to actually get a lasting freedom and victory and breakthrough. I mean, if there is one thing that is utterly crippling to a man, it is feeling powerless. It's feeling impotent. It's feeling like I can't do anything about the battles that are overwhelming my life. And the good news is you can. You can. We are promised in Scripture that if we learn how to resist our enemy, he will flee from us, James 4, 7. And so welcome. What we have done is pulled a couple of talks that I've done at different conferences for men and put them together into one resource here to train you and teach you both how to recognize and more importantly, how to overcome the spiritual attack that every man experiences, frankly, as a normal part of the Christian life. The lives of many rest in the courage of a few. There's something in you that wants that to be true and wants it to be true of you. There are several things that we've been trying to kind of dial you into, help you to fuller apprehend and understand and grasp and enter into and enjoy. You have a heart. The heart is central. You live in a larger story, incredible story. It's a love story, but it's a story at war. You live in a world at war. There is the poser, but the poser is not the central thing and it's not the most important thing. You have a wounded heart and Jesus came to heal your wounds and restore you to a genuine strength. You have an identity. You have a name. There's a validation coming to you and that needs to continue to come to us from the Father. We need to hear what he thinks of us. We just need it to fight off all the lies and and, and all of that. This morning, what we need to enter into is something that's going to be immensely helpful to you, that for um, tragic reasons, many, many men in the church don't understand, and that is you have an enemy. There is an enemy. In fact, the story of your life is the story of the long and sustained assault against you by the one who knows who you could be and he fears you. He fears you becoming that and stepping into that. The lives of many (laughs) depend on you rising up as a man, becoming who you were meant to be, who you really are, actually walking with God in that and in your place in his story. But the first thing is we have got to deal with the enemy. You read 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Peter is writing to Christians. And he says, heads up. You guys, heads up, be sober, be on the alert, be on your guard. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, firm in the faith, 
knowing that your brothers around the world are undergoing the same sort of sufferings. Peter is assuming something about the normal Christian life, about your life, about any person's life. But in here, he's writing to the brothers. And he is assuming that you're under regular spiritual attack. It's just a given. It's not hocus pocus. It's not something kind of different or only for those, you know, missionaries in foreign countries. Peter said, oh, no, this is, this is all around the world. And notice how he characterizes it. Devour, maul, thrash, destroy, harm deeply. He doesn't just say he's trying to tempt you, give you bad thoughts. He says, oh no, this is really ugly. This gets really brutal. Heads up. It's just part of the deal. Okay. All right. Resist it. Resist it. Do something about it. Don't just let it roll over you. Don't just take it. Okay. That's the posture of the scriptures, right? Given the larger story, given what happened in Act 2, given the fact that Satan is now in the earth with an army behind him looking to destroy. I mean, Jesus says there's a thief who comes to steal and kill and destroy. This is Jesus' teaching, right? So if Jesus says there's a thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy, then... There's a thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. There's something in us that's just like, I don't want to hear it. (laughs) Oh, do we have to deal with this? Uh, I don't know. I just, I don't think there's room in my theology for this. Well, it's like theology or not, it's in your life. It's happening to you. You might as well fight it. Remember Aragorn and Gandalf trying to urge King Theoden in the two towers, you must fight, right? And King Theoden says, I will not risk open war. That is the perfect picture of the church right now. And Aragorn looks at him and he says, open war is upon you, whether you would risk it or not. It's not something that we invite. It's not something that we choose. It's something that we have been hurled into. And that little boy is a warrior because he's going to need to be a warrior as a man. Standing between you and everything you want in this life, the love, the validation, the healing, the freedom, the influence, right? Your dreams, standing between you and all of that is an enemy that you have to come to terms with. You must fight. Resist him. We're commanded to resist. In Revelation chapter 12, it actually is a great view of Christmas. Revelation 12. You want to see what really happened to Christmas? It wasn't away in a manger. It was this massive battle in the heavens. Michael and Satan and all these angels and demons are fighting it out over the birth of Christ because the birth of Christ is the invasion of the kingdom. Right? The kingdom of God is invading this world. But then here's what it says. After it describes that battle in Revelation 12, there was war in heaven. Then it says, Then I heard a loud voice. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of Jesus Christ for the accuser of the brothers. The accuser of our brothers who accuses them day and night has been hurled down. They overcame him, talking about the saints, overcame him by the blood of Christ, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much so as to shrink from death. No fear, no fear, no freaking out by the blood of Christ. But he's called the accuser. The first level of this assault comes into us in the form of his spin on your life, his interpretation of events, the way he tries to distort things at the level of accusation, bottom line, those sneering thoughts that are so familiar to you that you think they're coming from your own thoughts, your own head, right? You, that sneer, 
this isn't for you. It is too late, right? That lie that says, you are disqualified. That voice that says, I know, I know your story. If these guys knew, right, all of that, all of that is coming from the enemy. Don't trust anyone, right? That's from the enemy. God's not coming for you. He's not coming, right? You will never be a man. Right? You'll never get free of this stuff. Or just that, just that more sort of religious voice that says, whoa, tiger, this is a little out there. You know, enjoy this, but kind of moderate it a little. Actually, I am moderated. I'm way toned down. I'm trying not to come on too strong, okay? <laughs> this is 101. All right, but just that sneering voice that just talks about, be comfortable. You're fine. You're fine. You, you don't want to get into this. You know, all of it. The accuser of the brethren. Right? You missed your opportunity. That was past. I mean, so many ways this comes into us. You married the wrong person. Right? These lies that come in, and now here's what's so diabolical about it, is the enemy knows your story, right? And he knows your wounds. He was present for all of them. He caused most of them, right? But he's there with the message of your wounds. He knows your story, so he knows what works with you. Oh, that really sucked. You suck at this. Whatever that is, that meeting at church, that business presentation you did, the attempt to get the graduate degree, whatever it is, you got the beauty, you didn't get the... He knows your story. He knows your father wounds, right? He knows the messages that work with you. And until you deal with this, you just get creamed. You just get hammered by it. We hope you have enjoyed this taste of our teaching on spiritual warfare for men. You can find out more about this new resource, A Battle to Fight, and several new resources that we are offering by visiting our store at www.ransomedheart.com.